honey. See those girls? He sees them. He didn't know what to think of that cow. <laughs> He's got to find his way in. She's friendly, kind of. You girls may have to come help him. There you go. There. They're all checking him out. What do you girls think? I know, I didn't bring you any, any, anybody. Hey guys, welcome to Country View Acres. So today we went and got a ram. Uh, we've gotten a herd of Katahdin ewes earlier that had some babies on them, um, I think in March, March or April. So now we finally have a ram so we can breed. We'll probably keep him for a couple years at least and build our herd up a little bit, but he seems to be doing well out there. It looks like he's already bred at least one of the ewes, but he's having fun chasing them around. So I'll be excited to have some little lambs in the spring. He's whispering sweet nothings in her ear, wooing her. Is he? Yes. Yeah. They've got like a little dance going on out there, don't they? Yes. She seems to like him. All the others left. They were stomping at him, but one of the girls is hanging with him. So Yeah, and he we think he's bred her twice, it seemed like already. Yes. So he's went right to work. And she must be in heat because Yep. Yeah. He's definitely staying right next to her. Yeah, <laughs> staying right next to her. Yep. Yep. He didn't know what to think of. Maya and Ellie. So I don't know that he's probably ever seen a cow before, but he was a little nervous when he first saw them, but he managed to run by them in a hurry and get out to the sheep. So we're going to go ahead and let everybody, I guess, get to know each other. And uh, we've got to get everything out of the barn and get ready for tomorrow because tomorrow if we're going to butcher chickens. So we need to get all, all the equipment for that. And then we also, we got to make a run and get some feed today and we're gonna try to set up an area for the beef steers so that they can have some more grass. So that's what we're doing, so stick with us. All right, we're at Mon Eagle Products in St. Marie, Illinois. There you go, that's service. Can't beat that, can you? Pretty empty, isn't it? Yeah. A bunch of sunflower seeds loose. Ran out of sheep feed, had to pick some up. Actually, I should probably put that in the can. So we built this feed storage box probably four years ago, and it's actually worked out fairly well. We haven't had any mice or any animals or anything get inside of here. Maybe a few little bugs have got in here, and that's about it. And I know people told us that this wasn't gonna work, that we'd have animals chew through it and get into the bags of feed, and that has not happened. We don't have rats here, we just seem to have little Little field mice is what we have, and it's actually worked out well for us. You can put uh, you can put 20, ba 20 bags in here, a thousand pounds of feed, and uh, this is how we store our, it, it in bags in this box. So we've got a line of storms coming in, so we may not get done everything we want to today before it rains, but we have a lot more feed we still need to unload. We're gonna store this in barrels. This is actually pig feed. We're about to run out of our bulk um, pig feed and we're gonna just store this in 55 gallon drums 
because it's too, there's too much to, to put in that box. And then it'll store really good in these drums. If we don't use it, it'll still be good next year if we put it in these drums. Oh. This here is the, uh, it's like a finished ration for the pigs. It's, it's designed for pigs that are actually like, what, about 300 pounds, 250, 300 pounds. And this feed right here is actually milled right there at Mon Eagle Products. Are we gonna use both these barrels so it's okay? Yeah, to I think we'll have to one? use both of them. Okay. You send me close. That'll almost fill it up right there. Well, we gotta kick the barrel. Or you can just shake it. There's a spider. You gonna save his life? <laughs> I eat mosquitoes and stuff. Oh, you have to shake that one. Couldn't quite fit the last bag in, so we'll just go ahead and feed it to the pigs. Hey boys, I know you still got plenty of feed, but we're gonna give you a little bit more. I don't gotta feed you tonight. Here you go. Hey, piggy, piggy. They're all clean right now. There's no mud on them. They're mm -hmm. dry. They'll be muddy tomorrow because it's going to rain. Yeah, but they're clean right now. They look nice. They are big boys. I can't tell if that one or that one's bigger. I don't know. It is close. Yeah. I think he's a little wider, don't yeah. you? I think Snickers is a little bigger. A lot of bacon right there, and these two are the smallest. He's the Payday's smallest. Payday's the smallest, yeah. yeah. So we still have just a little bit of bulk feed left in the wagon, and that'll probably get us through the next week. And the bag feed we got today is for the, they're, they're still here for another 45 days that they're gonna be here. So we're hoping that the bag feed we just bought will hopefully run out about the time they end up going to the processor. So they're gonna be, they're big now. They're gonna be pretty big here in another 45 days because at this point in time, they really eat a lot at this point in time. And it um, seems like they really got a lot more weight gain in these last few months. So I think they're gonna be pretty big. Well, it started to rain now, so I think we're gonna pause for a little bit. I had a lot of people ask me about the pond. Um, you can probably see it here behind me. So the duckweed, you can tell there's less duckweed right now. The cooler it gets, the less we have. And it likes to kind of hug along the edges. And you can see we got some more right there. But there's still quite a bit back there in the very back. But the cooler the weather gets, the less and less duckweed we'll have. And um, it'll look really good here once it gets a little cold. It'll start looking real good. And then it seems like, you know, when it gets hot in the summer, June, July time frame, that's when it, it just explodes and takes over the pond. But yeah, a lot of people notice the pond look better and it is looking better, but that's just mother nature taking its course. So it ended up raining the rest of the day. So we didn't get anything set up for butchering chickens. We didn't get any pasture set up for the animals. So luckily though, it was a nice long rain and uh, we definitely needed it. And hopefully the ground is soft enough for us to put in this temporary fence. But we're gonna go ahead and see if we can give the dairy cows and the sheep an area over here toward our house 
and we're going to trust that the new ram's going to stay inside. I think he's going to try to stay with the girls, so I don't think we have to worry about him getting out. So we're going to set this fence up just like we did the last one. We're going to do three strands to try to keep in the sheep, but I'm going to use a fiberglass post at each end because this is way more rigid, and hopefully it'll just give us something solid to kind of, you know, tie the ends to as we, as we run this. No luck? No. Nope. Oh, this was easier. Here, I'll try here. You go further down. That one went in easier. I bet it has to do with where the tractor drives. My, my guess. It's amazing how much harder it is where you drive over it. So today is the solar eclipse. But it's so cloudy here, we can't see it. I figure it's gonna get quite a bit darker, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Maya, if we let this fence down, are you going to bother us or are you just gonna eat the grass? Look at her, she's got mud all over her head. She's crazy today. Mm-hmm. Hey, it got brighter instead of darker. I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a hole in the cloud. All right, I think on this end, I can just take this handle off and then maybe we can reel it up. We can at least try. It may not want to go since it's wrapped around so many posts. I think it's funny you just mentioned the eclipse and then here the sun. <laughs> <sighs> nope. It's wrapped around the post too tight. Got to reel it up the old fashioned way. Let's just do here, here, and there. I think we did there last yeah. time. All right. And we purposely haven't mowed this, knowing that we wanted to give them some extra grass. Yes, once we had the opportunity. We probably had to wait for the ground to soften up. Well, we set this up twice because, ah, oh, woo! -hoo. I heard that. Ah, it's shocking me right through the, um, Wire. The insulator that second time for sure. Definitely a hot <laughs> wire for sure. Holy cow. Let's try this again. <laughs> you gotta laugh at yourself, I guess. All right, it is energized. <laughs> so we had to set this up twice because we ran out of poly braid. We had to adjust all our posts, bring everything in to get it to reach. And I think we've got like an eighth mile, a half a roll on here and it wasn't long enough the first time. So I got the gate open and now all the animals can go out into the yard where we have the electric wire. I think it's gonna take a little while for them to figure it out though. How do you call them? Here you use, here you use, yeah. That's Rebecca's call to the sheep. <laughs> you guys aren't as scared of me as you are of Evan. Go on, come on, you they use. don't like me. Come on. Come on. Well, for uh, an eclipse, there's another. There's <laughs> the sunshine. Yeah. Here comes Maya. Come on out, Maya. I don't know she can fill her mouth so full. She's not even chewing it up. You'd think you need to take a breath or something. My goodness, it's like non-stop. So this is the first time we've let the sheep and dairy cows out on poly braid. We've let them out before on electric netting. This is the first time on the poly braid, we'll see how this works, but uh, I got a feeling this is gonna actually work out pretty good. The good thing is, if they do get out of the poly braid, I have them so trained to grain, they come running as soon as they see me go in and start messing with it, so yep. they'll and, come right back to me. And they're right next to our house. So yeah. if they get out, more than likely, they're just gonna be right here close to the house anyway, at least on this side. Yep, and you think we'll close them up at night back in the barnyard? because. We do have coyotes. And... Yeah, I think at night we'll go ahead and close the perimeter gate and we'll only let them out here in this area. Um, 
you know, during the day when we're here. So now we'll go ahead and get out all of the chicken processing equipment and hopefully we'll be able to process chickens tomorrow, but we'll try to get at least everything out and ready today. We got our three main pieces of equipment that we use for processing chickens. We've got our whiz bang chicken plucker, and this is a this is like a homemade deal out of a 55 gallon drum. I did not make this. I actually found it on Facebook Marketplace, and they sell kits for you to be able to build these. I don't think that these are probably the cheapest route to go, but I do feel like it ends up being bigger than a lot of the ones you buy at like the farm store and, or your, you know your low your homestead or steader can't talk homesteader models i do feel like this is actually bigger than most of those uh we used to use like an old turkey fryer for a scalder and this is what we call our killing cones for the lack of a, a better word i guess um we got these from uh right farm products and these are for our broiler chickens these are not big enough for turkeys. So we actually bought four of these, four turkeys that are bigger and we need to go ahead, we're gonna probably put, mount those on the backside. So we did buy four of these. This is for the turkeys since you, maybe you can tell, I may have to lean that back, but can you tell how much bigger they are? There, there's quite a bit of a size difference between the two of them. And hopefully this is gonna work out for us this year because there's no way the turkeys would fit in these. All right, there we go. One side for turkeys, one side for chickens. And it's very wobbly. I think we just need to come up with some kind of brace to put on here. So we still have a table and some coolers that we need to get cleaned up and, um, and we need to pull the feed tonight for the chickens. And then hopefully tomorrow we'll uh, be able to get uh, most of them processed. But right now it looks like it's about to rain again. So our new ram lamb is right back there and he's been staying in the poly wire all day. He's been hanging out with the sheep. He's always stayed next to at least one. Most of the time he was chasing one of the ewes around. So. Um, I think he's gonna end up working out for us. He's um, like eight or nine months old and he is a registered Katahdin. And we were lucky enough to be able to find him uh, from a couple over by Terre Haute, Indiana. So it actually wasn't like too far away to be able to go and get him. Anyway guys, I think that's gonna be it for this video. We did not get to do as much as we planned to over the last couple days just because of the weather. Um, it's actually sprinkled on and off, kind of rained on and off today as well. It's just, uh, we ended up spending most of our time inside. And I spent a lot of it in the workshop, getting stuff cleaned up and doing some odd jobs that needed done, but didn't get enough or what we really wanted to out here. But hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to get our, our broiler chickens processed and in the freezer. But uh, today, today was definitely a dreary day and the eclipse came and gone and we did not even tell we couldn't even tell difference like we wouldn't if we thought it was gonna get dark like we really thought that it would get really dark when the eclipse happened and it basically just looked like this all day long and we couldn't we couldn't even tell that it ever happened so we kind of we ended up missing out on the eclipse because of the weather as well but at least we did get some rain because uh, we really did need it. But uh, I think that's it for today's video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.